Welcome to the first episode of Recorder on the Wall, recorded live on June 22nd, 2017. I'm your host, Pete. I'm your other host, Jeremy. And with our guest... Drew. Welcome, Drew. <laughs> Unfortunately, Matthias couldn't be here with us tonight, guys, so uh, we'll catch him on the next go. So, But we reviewed... Red, Red Wall. Wall. Very... The very first uh, published book in the series, Ninth Chronological, published in 1986. We decided, why not? Let's start with the first one published, and we'll go from there. Uh, so, just to start us off before we actually get into this tome, uh, we're going to repeat, if anyone didn't listen to our episode zero, just briefly, gentlemen, how did you find the series? Uh, what is your favorite book or character? And uh, any particular habits you have when you re- re- go through the series again. So, Jeremy, why don't you start us off? Right. I'll go next and Drew, and Drew third. Okay. Uh, I got Martin the Warrior from a book catalog my elementary school would give out every year uh, right before summer. And I really liked... At the, I remember I, would, I had pet mice. I was really I really liked mice. So I'm like, oh, this looks cool. I like swords. All right. So... Uh, from then on, I would either, like, my parents would be like, oh, we found this, it's connected to this, or I would find out my friends would read it. And I think at least one of the books I had read through when I borrowed it from a friend before I got it. All right, then. Um, my entry was similar. I also came to the series at Martin the Warrior, but it was through a, uh, my grade school would have book fairs, like, once or twice a year, and I saw a picture of the sword building mouse on the cover, and I'm like, eh, what the heck, what the heck not. Yeah. And then, uh, so yeah, and then I picked up the rest of the series from there. I think Bellmaker was my second one, and I was wondering what the heck this Abbey was. That's funny. That was my second book, too. (laughs) And what about you, Drew? Uh, I actually picked it up at the library at 11. We had a summer reading program, and I absolutely destroyed every single book in the uh, young adult section. Because uh, we would go on long trips, and so I would rent six or seven books and just uh, go through them while I was uh, in the car. Oh, and man, after my own heart. So. I loved this series so much that I actually bought all of the books at 13. I got them for uh, Christmas, and we were just receiving boxes from random people for about, like, the next two weeks, and that was kind of exciting. Uh, cool. And in terms of... Do you say particular habits when reading? I just if you um, if you like to read the series in a particular order, or you had like, oh, I always wanted to do this one, or I don't know. No, I Hab- actually. Oh, I'm sorry for uh, cutting you off. I uh, I just kind of pick them off the shelves depending on my mood. The only ones that I haven't reread at least three times are uh, Martin the Warrior because it made me cry, mm-hmm. and <laughs> Outcast of Redwall because I think that's the worst one. Interesting. Uh, See, the one, sure, I, I wonder, the one I'm not looking forward to rereading is Doom White, because that one's nightmare fuel. Oh, my God. I never read that one, so... You're in for a trip. For, for me, Rogue it's crew. Crew. <laughs> Um, I know we're going to get some shade from people who like those specific books, but hey, <laughs> that's what the podcast is for. So, yeah, but... I, I mean, I, th- I think I wore out... I still have my copy of Salamandastron that's falling apart and signed, so I think that's where I always came back to the series mm-hmm. when I did. Well, I just went rereading for this podcast. I was rereading my second copy of Red Wall, because the first one, the cover mm-hmm. fell off. <laughs> um, I had... I, I ended up buying this for buying a copy month, about a year ago or two when we did our... We looked at the animation for the other our sister podcast. Yep. And... Um, yeah, this was not the first... When I originally read this one, uh, it was with the nightmare-inducing art of Clooney on the back. You don't see that here. Oh, yeah. Is that the one with the blue cover on the side? Maybe. It's just... Yeah. It's him, and he's got a rat face, and he's just, like... Looks like Vegeta's hair on the back. <laughs> Maybe Black he spikes. Like, uh, the one has, like, a purple... And, like, on the side of it, it's purple, and on the, I think on the back is blue. Yep. Should be able to find it. Um, how did you, when, Drew, when you read the original, um, with how the series were you? Uh, Redwall was actually the first book that I picked up because oh. I've been oh. asking a uh, a librarian just about 
uh, series that I might enjoy. And I think I really identified with uh, Matthias at first. I just really, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I want to pick up a sword and, you know, stab a rat and, <laughs> uh, you know, just like, this will be a, this will be a fun read. And uh, kind of as I, the garbage. <laughs> oh my god, the series grew with me. I uh, enjoyed fantasy. <laughs> I mean, I admit, um, I still there's still part. Of, I'm a bigger sci-fi fan these days, but this series definitely keeps me. I'll, I'll, I'll come back. This definitely keeps me introduced me to fantasy elements, and it's why I like read Game of Thrones and other book, fantasy books of the same genre. Yeah, this in uh, Warriors filled my quota of uh, talking animals killing <laughs> each other. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, but that just leads us to the book itself, unless we oh, have anything um, else to cover. Oh, favorite book character. Um, oh, I can uh, already mention mine, yeah, so mine, mine strong. <laughs> All the badgers. <laughs> mine's Martin the Warrior and the character the, and the book. Um, mm. It was the first one I read. It's the one that got me into the series. and I. He's a Bible. Yeah, it's it's, not, it is a really, really sad ending to that book, and we'll get to that when we reach it. Yeah, um, but... I, I, for me, that's also kind of what sets it apart from all the other ones, because all the other books have, like, happier endings for the most part. And this one is, well, as I said, for the most part, um, for people who could, well, for everyone who can't see, Pete was like, eh, uh, <laughs> like, shaking his hand like, what? There's always at least a couple of heroes oh, there's deaths plenty in every of them, book. But, like, Martin literally ends with just, like, well... Martin's like, I'm never going to talk about any of you ever again, because... <laughs> you know? Spoilers! Um, well, anyway, uh, um, the, I, also, I was the one that put in that note about like special reading habits when revisiting the series, because um, whenever I go... Sometimes when I go back to it, I'm like, okay, I'll read it in the order that I got them, and I'm like... Redwall, this was the fourth one that I read. Or I'll read them in chronological, I'll read them in publishing. Like I'll, I'll, I used to come up with like random ways to go to reread the series. Uh, but the main thing for me is I like to listen to music while I read um, and also while I write. And it's stuff that, for me, matches up with what's going on in the book and going the story. And I started doing this forever ago, like back in early high school. And surprisingly enough, it was Star Wars music that I would listen to while reading it. <laughs> and I actually now associate a lot of the Star Wars songs more with these books than I actually do with Star Wars itself. <laughs> Metalusa never told you what happened to your father. <laughs> <laughs> Martin, I am your father. <laughs> um, so, like, there's specific songs I'll pick for, like, the different moments in the stories. Like, obviously, like, Duel of Fates is good for, like, final battles and stuff like that. Um... But oh, I was going to suggest the touch from the Transformers uh, <laughs> series. Uh, um, or I like, uh, for me, the song Luke and Leia from Return of the Jedi is, for me, I listen to it whenever I read stuff yeah. with Martin. Like, for me, that's his theme. You know, And so whenever I hear that song, I think of Martin the Warrior. I think of his scenes with Rose in Martin the Warrior, the book. Or uh, where they discover his tomb in Red Wall. So, like, I don't even think about Return of the Jedi when I hear that song. Okay. All right, then. Well, shall we get to the main article, then? Book one. Can do. The Wall. So, all these, all of the Red Wall books are separated into three parts, books, or in case of Marl Fox, acts. Yeah, that was weird. Um, We'll come to that. that We'll we'll cover that book. (laughs) So we're only covering the first third of the book. Although I think, remember reading there was a book with four parts? Might be. We'll, we'll find out. Eh. We'll find out when we about. get there. Ignore me! We'll find out when we get there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're covering the, quote, the wall. And I'm not sure what that's supposed to be referring to other than the walls of the Abbey itself. Uh, I think so, that's it. It's like a lot of the big plot of the of Clooney's campaign is trying to deal with the wall around Redwall. Um, mm-hmm. Like trying to scale it, trying to... Eventually he tries to dig under it, and that does not go very well. Um, 
which doesn't happen in no. this portion, but yes. So, um, and then we, we we don't find out there is kind of something under the Abbey until mm-hmm. a lot later. Um, something in the roof, too. There's that, and we don't yeah. find that out yet. But yeah, this is the f- this is the first time that we're introduced to the world. A lot of the rules are still being written of the world, so yeah, this is kind of interesting. We'll restart this over again. So the book begins um, reflecting on let's see the summer of the late rose. Uh, Matthias. Yep. Nice. And these books only take place during summer, with a little bleed into spring or autumn. There's never a winter book. Uh, any- there are... Anyone ever there... noticed that? Or at least yeah, not there that are I ones read. that take place in winter. Um, I know the bookends of Martin the Warrior take place in winter. Um, there, are, there are ones. I think there's one of the books that I think an outcaster read while it goes to winter at Salamandastron. I know there's at least one winter mm-hmm. at Salamandastron. Um, but yeah, moss flower starts yes, during the winter too. It. Okay, I'll shut up because I totally <laughs> forgot that. So, <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, the book begins, and again, if you're listening to this podcast, you've either read the book or you're counting us a spoiler on it, so yeah, spoilers. Um, spoilers! The book starts begins, off with Matthias tripping over his sandals. This is an important plot point. Literally, It's an important yeah. plot point. And You'll have to remember that, it for later. Uh, Write it down if you have to. The yeah, it's kind of sterner than I remember. If I... But uh, yeah, the abbots and abbesses come and go in the oh, yeah. series. But we find out Matthias was an orphan mouse basically coming to the gates. Um, we never meet his parents or even yeah. hear about There's them. There's a lot of orphans yeah. in this franchise. That's never... <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of orphans in this franchise. I thought that was kind of fun just because it was never expounded upon, except for in the uh, the TV series where suddenly he had a yeah. sister who carried him to the and gates. And died. Wait, yeah, what? you don't remember that in the cartoon? Yeah, <laughs> during it's the, been uh, a long time yeah, since I watched could. the animated cartoon. <laughs> All I remember is the uh, the abridged series, uh, Redwall the abridged series by Heatherin. Oh no, uh, <laughs> where they had the absolute worst voice for the sister. That's that's what I'm remembering I'm the, right now. I'm gonna have to look the worst voice. I just I. think of like Doctor Girlfriend from Venture Brothers. Here, yeah, Matthias, I'm gonna carry you to Redwall. <laughs> <laughs> Just listening to my soothing voice, Matthias. I'll carry you to safety. I'm dead now. Perfect. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. This the opening chapter just kind of gives us a background of who, like, what Redwall is. At the, you know, it's a place of peace. It was founded by Martin the Warrior and hmm, Abbot Mortimer. Matthias, later on, Methuselah. There's a lot of M's. Well, Alliteration. There, there, something we'll so. find out, like, I, I kind of like these earlier books, like the names in them, and it, as we'll get to the later books, the names start to get weirder and weirder and weirder. Just, Just a, a little. little. bit. What is the pattern? <laughs> Dude, wait till you get to some of the really late ones. I can't even remember half the characters' names, because they don't make any sense. Yeah. Um, and then our second chapter literally begins with our villain. Colony the Sketch. And, yeah, I'm going to straight up say this. Uh, Clooney may be one of the most, like, chaotic evil villains in the entire series. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he has no other motivations. He's just a jerk. No. We see some lawful evil villains, we see even, like, neutral evil, but this guy's straight up chaotic evil. Uh, he, he'll pick on his own horde member just because, hey, he's having I mean, an shoot, there's a moment where he gets one of his own horde members killed and goes, Tell the devil Clooney sent ya! Yeah. Uh, for, for reference, when I read this portion, I listen to the Imperial March. <laughs> oh, yeah. Appropriate. Um, yeah, so Clooney's on his way, and we'll cover the horse and cart in a bit. But I, yeah. I do like these early um, chapters, like the quick, short kind of vignettes for Clooney, where it's if if you notice his yeah. chapters in the beginning are like two pages, whereas the Redwall stuff is like three to four. Goes into deep, yeah. Uh, then then chapter three is pretty much isn't that the feasting uh, chapter? Yeah, pretty oh, much. Oh. It's well they 
cap they catch the Grayling and things like yeah. that. We see that Matthias is, you know, he's eager to help. He's eager to please. And we get introduced to Constance the Badger, who becomes a very, very big part of this story. My favorite character in this book, and everybody drags Constance. I uh, I have so many notes right here that just say drag a badger, where Matthias is just like, oh, Constance is slow. You know, uh, I can I can help with that cart. <laughs> just like, who are you? <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I love Constance. Uh, yeah. The pretty, it's just, the, I mean, this is, the, again, the first book to establish the world, but Badgers are not to be oh, messed yeah. with. Pretty That is a awesome. big thing in this franchise. Even like when the badgers are old, like we learn that badgers live longer than any other character, and even when they're really old, uh, look at Lord in Lord Brocktree with Lord Stonepaw, they're still a force to be reckoned with. Oh dude, Craiga oh, in her last And she's her last blind. Days. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I'd say out of all the badgers, Craiga <laughs> is like the biggest, like the toughest of them all. Just and she's in the most amount of books too, right? She's in like three or four of them. But, she, but she's a couple in of them, yeah. Long Patrol, Marl Fox, and she's still beating the heck out of stuff in Marl Fox. And they even point out, like, you have an arrow in your shoulder. Did you notice that? She's like, no. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So, yeah. The feast continues. The and, this uh, is the start of reading these books makes me hungry. Yeah. <laughs> like, holy cow, just all the descriptions and stuff. I mean, there's no wonder why there's tons and tons of fan creative recipes and stuff like that online, and even an official Redwall cookbook. Okay. Um, so, chapter four, in between the feasting chapters, we have Clooney still getting closer. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're getting to yeah. Clo- Cage um, goes into cart. Clooney's in the cart. Our Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> so then, chapter five introduces to the voles. Yeah. Uh, ah, like voles are never portrayed in a positive light in this entire series. Like, I don't think there's ever been no. I don't, know about I don't think that, there's but... ever been like a strong vole protagonist in this franchise. So, Chapter 5 is finally where the two plot lines intersect. And we get our horse and cart thing, and I'm, this we, do, we have to talk yeah, about briefly. The first and only um, appearance of a horse in this franchise, which I think a lot of stuff in this book we can kind of pass off. Like, they do say Clooney's a por- Yeah, it's, it's the, the first, first book. book. It's still establishing it. I mean, there's a line where it says Clooney might be a Portuguese rat, you know? And yeah. this would not be the first series to introduce something in the very first volume and completely oh, forget yeah. about it later. Mm. Or d- deliberately or accidentally so. So I'm not going to hold it against it, but it's, it's like, I remember reading this and I'm like, you know how big a horse is, right? <laughs> I mean, we're again, even the animated cartoon kind of leaned over this as quick yeah. as they could. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, think whatever. they uh, they size down all of the animals. I know um, it's been talking. People talk a lot about are these anthropomorphized animals, and of course, in the animated series, they were. Uh, well, but just it's harder to imagine the fights when you imagine how big a fox is versus, uh, say, a mouse. Well, that just leads into our first segment of. Anthropomorphic are they? So, yeah, if in this first book, this definitely leans towards the more animalistic versus the anthropomorphic. And, okay, sure, I'm yeah. fine with that. Why don't we have um, a moment where first books? Uh, it's just like Constance gets up on her hind legs or she takes the grayling in her mouth and just kind of carries it in her jaws, in which case, that's kind of gross right, after that. It's like, okay, I want badger slobber on my fish. Because how does a two-ounce mouse carry a two-pound <laughs> trout? <laughs> Fit grayling, whatever. Um, uh, yeah, so again, it's forgivable, but as you po- just pointed out, the animated series completely ignores how dubious the books are about it, and makes them all anthropomorphic anyway. So, 
as as far as are we going to hold it against the books? Never, of course not. There's a and even the official website because I looked this up is deliberately ambiguous about this. Like they're frequently asked questions. Hey, so, it's kind of left up to the reader's interpretation. I think is what they're getting at. So, so moving on. So yeah, the series continues and uh, yeah, the basically oh here's my favorite part. Oh, we'll come back to... Actually, excuse me, we'll ignore that. Um, shut up. <laughs> uh, yeah, the two the two groups meet. Uh, Clooney does, fortunately does not match the... known as the giant badger. Um, Drag a badger. Insults the badger. <laughs> Every um, character insults Constance. <laughs> why? I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, to be I'm honest, sorry. Clooney pays for that, and so does his, so do his forces many, many, many times. Yeah, rest in peace, oh, Red yeah. Tooth. <laughs> well, not yet, but we're getting there. Uh, um, yeah, I, but uh, yeah, and Clooney gets basically gets close to Redwall, and uh, Matthias and the others have to yeah, sneak back. I, I do like it too, where when they separate them out and just like the build up to Clooney arriving where we see he's warlike he has this horde of vermin he you know they've all got weapons and blades and he whips his tail around um and then we see the redwall creatures where it's not like they have like just an easy going ah oh, we just are in harmony with nature life you know they work hard they heck their ancestors built the built redwall itself that had to be a huge undertaking and as we find mm-hmm. out in later books, it was a huge undertaking. And, you know, they obviously worked hard to put together their giant feast and things like that. So it's, it's we see that, you know, they're hardworking but peaceful. Like, they don't believe in violence, but they're willing to stand up for themselves. Yeah. Um, definitely. But the, we, we see the group gets it back to, um, gets it back to the Abbey. And the abbot actually identifies who the rat is, and everyone's like, that's impossible. Yeah. He's just I a legend. Like, I like that, too, where Clooney is so notorious for what he's done, like, eventually people are like, no, he can't be real, there's no way. He's yeah. a boogeyman. Like, going to sleep, or Clooney will get rat. <laughs> So, question is how old Clooney is, but age is kind of a thing in the series that's never again clarified, yeah. so we're going to ignore that. Um, but my favorite part here is constant, and again, I'm not making fun of her, I'm making fun of the series. Okay? Uh, hey, Drew. Care. Careful. Uh, with I'm what I'm calling, I'm calling Spider Badger, okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, because she says outright her badger senses tell her that Clooney's a badger. Senses uh, tingling. Bad Anyone guy. call for a web slinger? Spider yeah. Badger. Spider she says badger. that later, too, when she's like, my badger senses told me that Clooney's... Well, we also see that a lot of badgers in this franchise have kind of like a mysticism around them. Like, Salamandistron itself, you know, like the mountain calls to the male badgers, or in Craig's case, the female badgers, you know. Occasionally. So, things like that. Well, you mean, if, aside from when they're getting in, in battle and uh, killing people in right, left, and right, and yep. blood rest. Yeah. Um, and I like... Matthias, and like I said, you know, we see that the Red Wallers are hardworking, but they're not just bumpkins. And I like Matthias's line of, we'll be ready. You know, it's not, we're going to take it, yeah. we're not going to kill thing. him, it's, we'll be ready for him. Okay, here's the thing. This follows medieval principles, but it's not exactly strict to human medieval traditions, but one of the rules in the medieval period was you did not attack an abbey. You didn't attack monasteries or abbeys. Um, now, not every would-be king or conqueror followed this, but the re- rationale behind it was is that these kind of facilities were supposed to be off-limits to armies. Sure, they would feed you, they would tend to your medical needs, but they did not participate in your wars. Um, that's how, even, that's why people became uh, priests or nuns, monks or nuns in the first place, was so they didn't have to worry about the army coming over the next hill. Now, obviously, this is not true in the Redwall series, but I always kind of found that interesting. And as pretty and much as we ta- learn, you don't mess with Redwall Abbey. No, no. by Tagaron, by the time Tagaron comes along, um, the place has a reputation, yep. and 
They actually referenced, I think it might have been Tagaron where they referenced, like, previous villains. Like, I think they mentioned, like, Slagar from Matameo and a couple others. It'd be like, yeah, they tried to attack the Abbey and were never seen or heard from again, which it's funny because Slagar didn't actually attack. He just kidnapped a bunch of kids and ran for it. (laughs) Yeah, Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, We are going to have to make a taken joke for that. Um, (laughs) The most convoluted villain in the um, entire series. Yeah. (laughs) Matthias, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will. Don't spoil it now. beat the statue with my sword. (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah again you know what I like Matthias throughout this whole book where he starts off as kind of a bumbler and then we see him kind of stand up and be kind of like a natural leader and I don't think and you know a lot of people could say like oh there's he's the main character of course you know Gary Stewart or whatever I, I think it's more of I could see him up at night reading and listening to stories of Basil of the Past reading about Martin the Warrior and be like I want to be like that someday and now this is his chance to do that that's one of the things that I thought was really clever about uh, the first chapter, whether intentional or not, was the mentions of Matthias's shoes and how clumsy he is. I just thought it was kind of a subtle nod to the fact that Matthias has big shoes oh, to fill with I like Martin. That. I like that. Ah, literally a little I like that. So, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> there are no phone calls in Redwall. <laughs> <laughs> Go for Papa <laughs> Abbott. Oh, sorry. Oh, God. All right, we're referencing more yep. about chicken. All right, so um, I, I, then we get Clooney arriving at Redwall, and we do get the moment of where Red Tooth is like, boss, did you see that badger? And he's like, ah, she's just a country bumpkin. Huh, Clooney, you're, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to regret oh, that in wow. about five seconds. <laughs> But I also, I like yeah. it, too, where you have the leaders showing no real fear towards them, Matthias, especially Constance and Mortimer, and whereas, you know, Matthias tries to tell the others, like, oh, don't worry, we're escorting him, and, like, it's the guards are like, eh, we don't want to go, and then Clooney goes, go, I'll eat ya, and they all run for it, <laughs> you know, to show that they're able to put on a strong front, but they've never faced anything like him before. Even though... If they've read history, yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'll shut um, up. And then I think with Matthias, he's coming off a bit more pretending to be brave, but also a bit more reckless because he's trying to emulate like Martin. And then, well, whereas Constance literally just does not fear him, but she's like, "I could eat you. I'm gonna pick my teeth with you." <laughs> We're gonna we'll get to that when we cover the oh, animated yeah. series. But um, yes, and then of course, of course, no. Clooney giving his. Uh, like his dictation of I'm going to take over you if you don't surrender you will be my slaves and yada yada and then as after he I love the moment of like fine then you will all die within these walls and then Constance picks up a giant oak table (laughs) and threatens to beat him with it (laughs) and Clooney's like they do badgers tend to do that Clooney's like alright and we'll be going now (laughs) Um, I also wanted to point out something. Um, I don't know if this really comes up in later books, but before Clooney even gets to Redwall, he sent out recruitment officers to local color. Ah, uh, yes. And this is kind. Of, this struck me as odd because usually, uh, to my memory, and again, I haven't touched the series in years. Um, pretty much most of the time we see hordes, they're they're kind of self-contained yeah, by this they're... point. There's so, a few that mix and match, like in Martin the Warrior, Badrang um, recruits all of Claw's men after defeating him in battle. But this is the, I think this is one of the few times we're explicitly told there were other, quote, vermin species just in the area, out. and they just kind of get, they get uh, drafted, in effect. Yeah. Let, so, let's keep an eye out for that in the other books. Yeah, definitely in the future. Um, although most of them pretty much sign up anyway. Yeah. A few of them have been convinced. I did like that, where some of them were like, it's Clooney? Heck yeah, I'm joining up. So, um, let's see. I'm getting through that. Uh, Yeah, so Abby also sends out the bells before Clooney actually gets there to say, hey, everyone in the area, 
You yeah. want to come and in. The repeated references to the Joseph Bell, which becomes a very yeah. big thing later on, and in, in other point. books we find out its origin. Yeah. It's uh, it was funny that you mentioned the uh, the other vermin in the area. I always saw was kind of odd. Uh, that some of them had to be press ganked into Clooney's army, but none of them responded to the bells and went into the abbey, despite the fact that we can see in the scene where they uh, were uh, yelling at Constance about calling Clooney evil without getting to know him, that the Red Wallers don't really have any aversion to uh, rats or stoats or weasels or foxes at this point. Yeah. I mean, the the rules of species equals alignment have not been established yeah. they yet. even let yeah. um, Chicken Hound, a fox, into the abbey later on? Oh, Sailor herself, yeah. his mom, too. Well, so almost. They get burned <laughs> every time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know what, I was thinking, the way people kind of bag on Constance, she's kind of like the wharf of Red Wall. It's like, if you, somebody made a montage of every time a Star Trek Next Generation Worf makes a suggestion, people just shoot him down. He's like, we could do this. They're like, no, let's not do that. Or, I have a better idea. Or, like, but like no, Worf, we'll keep that under advisement. And stuff like that. <laughs> Main difference mm-hmm. is Constance actually wins every fight. <laughs> Mostly. Mostly. <laughs> yes. I mean, we won't Come, we'll come to book three when yeah, we come to book she three. Gets locked in the um, house. Yeah. Um, that was their strategy with yeah. dealing with it. <laughs> we'll just ignore her, but maybe she'll go away. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't always work out that well. Uh, the badger and badger jail. <laughs> uh, so this is also the f- few times we get in the series mentioned to other species that never show like up beaver. again. Mm-hmm. Well, the beaver's not in this yet, but yes. Um, we get oh, yeah. mentioned that Clooney's various crimes, like apparently his ward ate a thing he of piglets. He stampeded cattle. Excuse me. There. Through a village, a human yeah. village? <laughs> Nobody knows. That's the question. Um, and then there's a mention of a town dog. Oh, yeah. Which, I don't okay. think yeah, dogs don't appear ever again. Uh-uh. We get cats. No, it's just we the... get wild cats in multiple stories, but no dogs. Yeah, um, I mean the closest we're going to get is foxes, if, mm-hmm. in effect. So, and the the not quite wolf fox wolf thing oh, yeah, in Bellmaker, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Ergen the Groom. Yeah. A wolf, yeah. Um. So moving on. Uh, Cooney takes a couple of attempts to get inside the abbey, first by trying to climb over it, and the guards are asleep, but they pretty much repel that. That, uh, that annoyed the heck out of me with Shadow, where, yes, thank uh, you. Clooney was just like, Shadow, you must climb this wall, you must climb this wall and get into the abbey, and don't even think about <laughs> opening the doors, the mice, the mice are too... Adept for that. You can't open I didn't the door. even think about that. So you should sneak into their house and steal well, a picture. I... And Shadow's like, sir? And he's like, no, 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 no. Listen to me, Shadow. Steal a picture. <laughs> yes. You know, I never thought about that until right this moment. <laughs> but I, th- I didn't, yeah, didn't think didn't Shadow went it. into there and went, oh, they're all asleep. Maybe I could open the front door. No, no, no. I th- steal don't a picture. they establish at some point or the, the, like the door is barred or something? Yeah. Well, so, yeah, I guess the main door, it would take a, a lot to yeah, get through. I, I'd, I'd like to think that's the reason. Granted, that also wouldn't stop him from opening one of the side doors, which, why do they have rickety side doors in this otherwise impenetrable yeah, that, those thing? Those side doors are mentioned, the side doors are mentioned in more than book, book but no one ever seems to notice that there's another yeah. way in. I guess the villains kind of yeah. see it as a challenge, you know, like, I, if I sneak in, I'm not as, <laughs> you know, like, if I sneak You'll in, I'm down. less of a rat or less of a fox or less of a whatever the heck creature I am. You know, I must defeat these yeah. walls. I can't just sneak in. That would that would actually be intelligent strategy. It's, yeah, we'll come to it when we cover Salamanus from, but the use of a poisoner actually makes that sense in that one. one. Mm. But, oh. um... 
So, the other thing I want to point out here is, yeah, Clooney, A, Clooney's obsession with Martin the Warrior, um, and even to the point yep. of nightmares. Which, this is the first mm-hmm. instance, and not the last, that we see Martin invading villains' dreams and doing just random mysticism that is completely unexplained in this franchise. The series doesn't play very... It doesn't do a lot of mysticism at all. What little we get is kind of usually just attached to Martin directly. Mm -hmm. Um, It can also happen when someone is near near death or uh, the unexplained seer thing. Which I don't. Does it even happen in this book? Do we get even no, get a seer? No, we don't get that in this book. We get that in. So Outcast of Redwall has that. Tagarung has that. Um, a lot yeah. have that. I'm just yeah, asking this about one, this. No, is we usually and it's always the fox. It's always a seer fox. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sella. Okay. Now. So yeah. Uh. So yeah, uh, Shadow does get the cut through the cut through the ta- tapestry of Martin Water and get that out to Clooney. So, but he dies when he falls from the wall. Yep, that's it. well. And there's Shadow with a ten point dive and uh, <laughs> judges. He gets uh, he actually I wouldn't say he fell. I think he gets smacked by yeah, Constance. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Which is point one in Constance's bad, uh, bad no. buttery. Can't. Constance one, everyone else zero. <laughs> Table zero. <laughs> table? <laughs> Constance, get the tables. Um, yeah, I actually, I like yeah. his idea of stealing the piece of tapestry. He's not just focused on killing everyone. He wants to demoralize them, and that's one of his ways to yes. gain victory. It is, mm-hmm. it's one of the, uh, the first signs of Clooney's intelligence is the fact that he actually, he recognizes that this is a symbol to them. And he's correct. In the, uh, the following yeah. chapter, Matthias feels like they cannot win the war without getting Martin back, and so do the rest of the Red yep. Wallers. And it's different from, like, in Marl Fox, where they just go, hey, that thing looks valuable, let's take it. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> yeah. Look at that cool thing. Mars. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, we can't all be Bender-Benning Rodriguez <laughs> when it comes to hurting the Abbey. Um, but, uh, yeah, some couple other points... Yeah, generally there's a siege here. Uh, oh, and then the siege kind of starts in earnest after that. And I like yeah. Matthias setting off on his own to try and get the piece of tapestry back, where he's just be you know, it again shows that he's brave, but he's also just kind of reckless. He's doing, like, the moment where he walks over to the tapestry and kind of speaks with Martin, and he's like, oh, you'd pick up that your big sword and go and take them out. Um, it's more of he's idolizing Martin just as a fighter rather than as a leader. You know, so he's like, oh, Martin yeah. would sneak off and go do this. Actually, that's what Gomf would do, but <laughs> go off and steal stuff. <laughs> right. Um, so when Matthias goes out to uh, get the tapestry back, uh, the rest of the Abbey's like, Where's the guy who's only had the only good military sense? <laughs> they kind of question where he they went. Do. Well, Constance Although, even says like he's if he's do, whatever he's doing, he's doing to help us. He's doing it to help out. So mm-hmm. Constance, the voice mm-hmm. of reason. And, and even Cornflower, she's still early in the game here, and we'll see more of her own military sense in the next book, like mm-hmm. Madame Mayo, But uh, mm-hmm. she's got a she's got a sense for it herself. So I like her. Um, but then we learn into the archetype of all. I hairs. love hairs. Yeah, I love that. I love Basil. He's great. He may be the most entertaining character in oh, this entire he's book. He's so much fun. I, I I love the standard he sets and just the fact that he goofs yeah. around with the rats and is kicking them around. He's like, you smell. What do they do? Call you Pongo." <laughs> Yeah, and even the animated series loves just... They go over the top with this character in the oh, best yeah. ways, if I recall He's, right. I remember in the mm-hmm. cartoon, he was gigantic. 
yeah, yeah. compared yeah. to everybody else. Bob is big as constant. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. I love this. I loved this scene. <laughs> he just runs away and jokes around with him, and Matthias is like, "All right, cool. I can sneak in now." Yeah, and Matthias has to rescue the Vol family. <sighs> <laughs> the whiny voles. Well, it's only the kid. No, it's well, really. yeah. His parents are just kind of like, oh, those rapscallions. I mean, you can't blame a toddler for being scared out of his wits in this kind yeah. of scenario. He's not yeah. a toddler. He was playing hide well, the bull rush with the neighbor well, girl. You can also look at it this way: the little baby Silent Sam who shows up later on is braver and smarter than uh, Colin Vole. Really, though. Yeah. Well, I hope there are no Colin fans listening <laughs> to this. I don't think there are. Nobody likes Colin. Oh, wow. Everybody hates Colin. He's a little loser. <laughs> All right. Okay. Regeer so, um, in the next scene is more is more likable. <laughs> Just raggy, raggy or raggy. raggy. Is, you know, yeah. I like yeah. Regeer. That sounds like <laughs> Regeer. <Raggy. laughs> Yeah. You know what? Okay. I think we, we should make so, yeah. a rule for this. Unless we know the official pronunciation, let's not ca- try to con- um, correct each other. Correct each other. <laughs> Just because okay. I know oh, there's perfect. plenty Fine. of things in this series that I am probably pronouncing wrong, but I don't really care. <laughs> well, before we even started recording, I had to tell you what the official pronouncing of Eulalia well, that one was. I just never under- I just thought it was like Eulalia. That's how I, that's how I pronounce it in my head when I'd read it. You know, huh. so uh, and getting to um, our favorite adder because the adder in Doom White is not my favorite adder. Um, <laughs> uh, I know in the cartoon they say Asmodeus. I always thought Asmodeus, so that's what I'm going to call him. Hmm. Um, and his first Noted. appearance is just creepy. Asmodeus, Asmodeus. Yeah, he's got. Hey, dude's got to eat. <laughs> so he's got to eat. Regeer's got to die. So long, Regeer. Yep. We hardly knew ye. Although it was quite funny watching you go uh, a tree branch smack <laughs> into your face. I love both times he gets tripped up, he's just muttering himself like, "Yes, chief, there were five of them. No, no, six of them." <laughs> I love. <laughs> Clooney may Clooney may punish. Uh, what he views as incompetence, but among among the horde leaders we will see in the books to come, he actually listens to his officers. Yeah. Does anyone else? Yeah. Yes, yes. He, he even does. listens and looks out for new officers like Scrag the Weasel. Mm-hmm. I do believe that one of the things that Clooney has going for him is that he's efficient. He's not nice, even when no. he's told that Scrag is dead, and Scrag happens to be probably the most competent villain in this book. You know, he's just like, whatever. You know, enough about that. You know, we have some plans uh, to lay mm-hmm. here. And he uh, he has the lay of his officers, too. When he sends mm-hmm. them out with Sella later, he knows that they're going to lose her. But he... It's yeah. part of his plan. Yep. Again, let's not get our set up ourselves. But yes, generally speaking, Clooney knows... Clooney knows... He, he respects his officers to yeah. a point. He left to listen to them, but he's not afraid to lose them. Yeah, because there's a lot of villains later on that just kind of be like, I'm in charge, I'm the only one with any brains, I'm going to be this, this, and this. I'm not going to listen to anybody. Yeah, definitely. Or in some cases, Uh, villains that just go completely bonkers. (laughs) Go bull the wild, anyone? Yeah, I was gonna say that's what I was thinking of. I, I was also thinking of um, Mad Eyes from uh, Pearls of Lutra. I forgot. Yeah. Hey. He kind of goes. He goes and talks to the little snake. <laughs> so that Matthias does wrong. not recover the. T- <laughs> All right, moving on. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> right moving along. Hey. Matthias, uh, he managed, he and Basil managed to free the Vol family, but they don't get this, the tapestry back by the ten, time this first portion yeah. ends. So they're on their way back to the Abbey, but Matthias just kind of falls. Well, he goes asleep. off on his own um, while Basil takes care of the Vol family, and I actually I also like the the full on battle between Clooney's horde and the Red Wallers. 
and you know it's like their first conflict and it shows like each side is kind of getting their own little victories like okay the mice are able to actually peg them with little arrows but all of a sudden like some of the rats and weasels and ferrets like they find a way to spin the um, church spikes around and throw them at them and that actually cuts through some of the stone and then Constance gets a hold of them and just boom, 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 boom. Oh, look, I just killed them. <laughs> yeah, that really is the first uh, the first big mention of death besides the rat that uh, jumped on the horde. The Small horse. Face. And uh, one of the things that I've been thinking about this book, and I thought about the books for a long time, is that I feel like these are books that can be read to children uh, relatively easily, but I don't think they're meant to be read by the same age group. So let's just say you could read this book to a five-year-old, but I don't think a five-year-old could adequately read the book. It's fairly complex in structure. Also, like they mentioned, not only are characters being killed, it flat out says with the spikes, they're either killed or maimed. Horribly, horribly maimed. Like, you know, yeah, for kids! Like, wow! Kids. <laughs> That's kind of dark. Granted, nothing compared to what we'll see in some later stories, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. they get into Again, it. Doom I mean, don't get me wrong, this is... I'm I'm a, I'm a belief that this is kind of a middle school age series, yeah, and you probably right. can't get away reading it to younger kids, but... Um, I'd say like the... Yeah, ten, I'm, eleven, an older crowd. That's fair. Uh, um, and I, you know, I like the way they close out this part of the book with you know they kind of leave it on cliffhangers. Like Clooney is setting up a siege ramp. Matthias is trying to find his way back to Redwall and falls asleep. Um, and of course, and then finally, it ends with Methuselah going. Ooh, I found something behind where the tapestry was, which makes me think now, and why didn't they ever think to look behind this thing? Does it just, like, and how gross is that wall going to be by now? Like, <laughs> good God. <laughs> oh. um, I mean, and this also sets up a series trope where there's always a puzzle to figure out, no matter what kind of horrible <laughs> war is going on in the background. I like that, though. I like the riddles. I like the puzzles. I like those in the series. Like, Pearls of Lutra, I think, is, like, the pinnacle of all that. Oh, jeez, yeah. And they even point out um, that the one that left the puzzles, like, God, she was a jerk. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, um, I'm, I just, yeah. So that kind of rounds out the first book. We have the beginnings of the real first fight of the war. We have Matthias... Uh, running off to be his own, being the hero, and mating up to the best character ever created for this entire series. And, and well, somewhat, mostly archetype of all hairs. <laughs> so, and who's a lot of fun? And yeah, uh, I just want to kind of read some of Matthias' notes since he can't be here. Um, he says Ambrose Spike has a drinking problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah, I'm. A, we're we're never really given like someone's. We're told this entire series where someone's outright drunk. Um, it's always implied. Oh, you know what? There's a lot of the, like the sea rats get drunk on grog. Like it'll actually say they have okay, like fair. bloodshot eyes and they'll actually be slurring their speech at points. Okay, I meant on the the oh, good yeah, creature side. Really, yeah, they never seized. get drunk. But here's the thing about actual strawberry cordial. It's alcoholic. So, unless they're all making, like, non-alcoholic versions of all their stuff down there, yeah. I think the shrews might get drunk at least once in a while, because they do drink, it's flat out called shrew beer. Shrew beer. I mean, you could pull a Hogwarts here and say that, you know, the whole butterbeer thing. Shrew beer. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) Uh, I'm gonna say you could pull a Hogwarts here and say the you know butter where they have the whole concept of butter beer, which it's like maybe a a point one percent alcoholic drink, so it's not really. Um, but it's hard to say. Uh, what you know, else? I liked. Um, he pointed out there was a really good line in one of during the feast where um, Ambrose Spike is doing the magic tricks. 
And I, the line that always stuck out to me, and he points it out here, is uh, Ambrose made a few mysterious passes and produced the shell straight out of the mouth of the Nostrog in- infant mouse. Was it magic? Of course it was. You know, I, I don't know. I, that was always like such a charming line. Yeah. And though we see in the series, there's no such thing as real magic beyond the occasional yeah, mysticism. This is true. So, um, let's see. Oh yeah, uh, Clooney has quote strange moods. Uh, Matthias is suggesting there may be some underlying mental illness here. Well, in quite all possibly. Honesty, if you were the smartest of a big group of mostly dumb rats with names like. Skull face and a red tooth. Wouldn't you start to go a little bonkers after a while? I mean, come on. You look at there's, there's a, a guy named Cheese Thief. I mean, that is like the lamest name out of any <laughs> villain. Did your mom hate? Yeah, him? it's like, oh, did your mommy yeah. come up with your villain name for you, Cheese Thief? Like, for goodness' oh, wow. sake, <laughs> Cheese Thief. Bang um, on your boy. Jeez, yeah. You know, we got like Red Tooth and Skull Face and I always like Dark Claw. I thought that was a cool name. And Cheese Thief. Like really? Come on. Well, as we'll see what happens I'm gonna later. I'm going to bag on him for the rest of the story. <laughs> yeah, cuz he actually shows up in the story like he's trying to climb the ranks here and he's jealous of other yeah, officers. And, Hold on. To yeah, that he well, we can remember he was a little jealous of uh Scrag the Weasel and Oh, we'll find out what happens with that in the next in the next part. Yeah. Um, what else did he put here? Uh, he does. Uh, he Matthias is a little bit harsher on Clooney than we were. He thinks that Clooney only looks out for number one. Yes, yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. But he, unlike a couple of horde leaders, we will see mm-hmm. in the future. Like we said, he does listen to his officers. But no horde leader does not think of self-interest first. I, I do like his uh, comment. If Shadow is the Redwall equivalent of a ninja, does that make him Splinter? <laughs> well, we have no turtles, so I'm not going to answer. Do that. turtles show up in the series? I don't believe okay. they do. I mean, they're reptiles frogs. do, but they're not yeah. in every book. They're kind of well, rare, I remember, actually. like, when the lizards show up in Pearls of Lutra, they're like a they're a real force to be reckoned with. They're like, yeah, we'll come to that, won't we? Uh, also, one thing we have not covered: the first appearance of Saint Ninian's yep. Church. <laughs> this is another. This is an outbuilding of Redwall, uh, and that's what I call it, is because it's basically always a home to one group or another, but invariably, and they even even the author at this point at one point pretty much calls himself out in the series. Pretty much every bad guy to come after Redwall uses this as a staging base. Until they even mm-hmm. uh, well, they take care of that in Pearls of Lutra. They they, they do, and we'll cover. Oh, that. Get rid of that thing. They Forgot cover about it. that honestly. We'll cover it when we get to that book. But yeah, this is just the first appearance of it, and yeah, yeah, yeah this is the first time it's used as staging mm-hmm. base against Redwall. And I, they do point out eventually in I think it's in Legend of Luke they point out where the name comes from. Oh, um, <laughs> oh yeah, shipping intensifies. I mean, the book does does its due diligence and just doesn't pair Matthias and Cornflower together. But from the start, it's pretty obvious. Like, here you go, kids. <laughs> There's going to be mutual attraction and flirting the entire time. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's built upon well, though. They do a good yeah, job. Yeah, it is, and I and. As much as we as in this review podcast, as much as we're going to make jokes at the book's expense. Especially about badgers. Sorry, Drew. Uh, <laughs> um, hey, just be glad I didn't reference the badger, badger, badger meme. Mushroom, um, mushroom. Because we have a snake. We have mushroom. a snake, but we have no mushrooms. So. I don't know. I, I just, just reading some of the later stories. No, we're both. We're above that. <laughs> We are above open referencing a meme. No, I wasn't referencing that. I was Jeremy. referencing the fact of like hallucinogenic shrooms. <laughs> so that's what Clooney took when he went to sleep. Actually, I was the, there, there is a go. story later on in Salamandershorn where they burn incest and suddenly have visions. So you know, uh, yeah. Something yes. I actually wrote as a positive think... for Constance. You know, just get, you know, giving her props. She's the first. Thank she you, is the you. first. Um, instance of something that becomes a staple in this franchise, which is very strong female protagonist and the protective badger mother. 
Yeah. Yes. I mean, the series got a lot of criticism up until Triss that the only people to wield the sword were mm-hmm. male. But you're not wrong in that. There, mm-hmm. um, while it, there's not a lot of female vermin species, there's a lot of female on yeah, the other side. We get a lot of, and warriors. we get a lot of badger mothers that are sometimes seen as like peaceful, but then the the minute you threaten the kids, oh, they'll put you through a wall. Or applied on the animated series, yeah. bite your head off. And so. The, like, so I like that Constance is the first instance of that. And even in the next book, in Madame Mayo, she continues to be like the most threatening person in that uh, in Redwall. Like she's awesome. Yeah. And Indeed. we get pl- and yeah, she's not a main character like Triss and Mariel in future books, but I think she gets plenty of great moments in this story. And it sets mm-hmm. the standard for other ones, That's all. especially like Krega. Um. Okay, I think that pretty much rounds it out. Okay. Unless you guys think of anything else I missed. Oh, moles. Oh, That's I love the moles. I, I will moles. say this: when I was a kid, I could not understand what they were saying. It took me a while to learn it too. I, I would have to re like sound it out initially as a kid to. And then eventually I adapted enough so I could read yeah. it straight. I think, like, once in a while my parents would take a look at the book and be like, what the heck? <laughs> 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 yeah. That that yeah. was, like, the only thing. And I do like the consistencies of some of their pronunciations, like Marthen the Warrior and stuff like that. Like, a little thing. You know, I, I always liked the moles. Like, they always seemed like the more sensible characters. And they're considered, like, strong, too. It's like they'll even say, like, oh, gosh, their digging claws are powerful, but they're such gentle creatures. Well, by the time we hit Martin the Warrior, what a group of moles can do to a collective <laughs> tunnel. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. And then Martin's outright... Uh, there's also Matthias talking outright to Martin, I guess, in his dreams. Uh, well, no, it's the scene the... where he goes up to the tapestry and just got like, what right. would you do? And, I mean, he does have the dream where Martin's like, save me, Matthias! Help me! <laughs> Watch your Navi warrior there, are you, buddy? <laughs> I am the ghost of Martin! <laughs> Although that's no, that's more of a Clooney's thing because as the nightmares are about to continue, Martin's like, "I'm gonna haunt you." <laughs> Martin likes doing that a lot in a lot of the stories. He just kind of shows up. Clooney, Clooney, <laughs> I'm haunting you. <laughs> well, see, like also in, um, I think it was either Outcast or Tagarung where they're like, "I see, I only see a mouse with a sword." Like, what are you talking about, a mouse with a sword? <laughs> Yeah, uh, that shows up in Metamail, but again, we will get to these in time. Oh, Let's yeah. Get ahead of ourselves. Oh, yeah, there's a, an example of a seer not being a fox. The crow. Okay. Yeah. Again, let's yeah. get ahead of ourselves. All right. Um, all right, so Martin's a ghost. Okay. Matthias is a reckless hero. Clooney is a mean one. Uh, you're a mean <laughs> You're a mean one, Mr. Clooney. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and Rigier likes talking to himself. You know, I mean, it's important to get your story straight before you head back to your boss. <laughs> Oops, snake! <laughs> and that's the end of that chapter. Yeah. Okay, I think we've yeah. covered everything. So, uh, Drew, did you want to plug anything before we uh, end for our listeners to go to? Um, not necessarily. I have uh, a few notes in here just kind of about uh, the narrative structure and Brian Jake's writing ability, but I'm not sure that's useful at this point. Up to you, man. Um, okay, so Jeremy, where can they find us on the web? You can find us at, it's recorderonthewall.com, right? Yay, I got it right! Uh, (laughs) Yeah, you got it right. We are on Google Play Podcasts. We are on iTunes Podcasts. And we have our own RSS yep. feed. And also, so. after if you like the sound of our voices, which hopefully you do, um, you can also check out our other podcast, which is a bit more PG-13, sometimes a little bit more <laughs> rated, uh, The Frustrated Fans. 
at the frustrated at frustratedpodcast.com. Shameless plug. Shameless when, plug. Yeah, well. Um, and if you were ever interested in being on the podcast itself, we always like hearing what people can offer. Look for our posts on the Reddit Redwall subreddit, uh, Eulalia, and the uh, official Redwall forums, where Matthias is an at, uh, 720s is a uh, system, is an admin. Would the Redwall subreddit be called the Redwallet? <laughs> <laughs>